Welcome to USMLE Sarti. We are committed to empowering IMGs. We are excited to guide you on your match journey. Don't forget to click subscribe and turn on notifications so you can get notified whenever we add new content. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter for the latest tips and tricks regarding everything USMLE. Now, let's dive into it. Uh, so first of all, uh, on the, this is an occasion of Guru Purnima. So I want to uh, thank all the gurus and it is a pleasure I get to speak today and thank you Dr. Khera for making this wonderful platform for everyone. And so uh, I'm sure that you have started with the, these three websites, but one thing about neurology is we don't actually have a lot of programs. So it's around 130 to 150 programs and I think a 40 to 50 of those programs are advanced programs. So we only have around 100 programs which are categorical. And if we see about the IMG friendly states and we exclude California and those places, then there is, so my list was around 80 to 90 programs only. And but I would suggest that if it is just 100 programs that you're looking at, I think it is a good number to target and applying broadly everywhere. And it's, you never know, you can get an interview from anywhere. And we are lucky in neurology uh, in a way where there are fewer programs and the list that I am people have to make is kind of a rigorous and an enormous process. But I think it would be easier for neurology applicants because it's just 100 programs. Any specific tips or guidance for signaling or how did you, sure. uh, you know, decide on IMG percentage or things like that? Mm -hmm. So I think signals are were very crucial for me and the approach basically in neurology or I think in any program would be if you have rotated anywhere in a program at a university or wherever there is when where there is a residency and if you have letters from there, I think those are the places where your signals are going to matter the most that it actually shows the intent that you were there for a reason and even after getting letters from there you are still showing intent so i got the opportunity to do my uh, rotations in two universities and i signaled both of them we only get three signals last year it was like that i think this year it has increased slightly increased yeah yeah so i think uh, th those are the best things and also uh, correlating your signals with the location preference that you put. Location preference has been a big thing that uh, the program directors are also discussing now because of the number of applicants which are increasing. They are trying to prefer people from their location. That is a kind of a filter for them now. So keeping it targeted on your location states and signaling in those programs would be crucial. And also you can take a risk with signal sometimes that if you want to get into a better program, you can use it as a sign or a flag for them that they could see your profile. I mean, it, it should not be like every time that you have to play it safe, you can take a risk. There are three signals you can use to in as safe but you could want aim for one at least to you know if you want to get into a better place so you could do and that. what about img percentage you know the cutoff or how did you decide it was an img friendly program especially as a visa seeking applicant yes so i used it was very simple for me i used to open uh, their websites and the, there are, of course, there are IMG percentage written on Frida and Residency Explorer and everywhere. But the best way to make sure of it was I used to directly open the website and see the 
names of the presidents which is the easiest way you can see if there is someone from your country if there is from probably south american countries from asian countries and it it's easy to look it up most of them have emails you can also reach out to the residents over there kind of ask them there are a few programs in which you will not see any imgs in four years but that doesn't mean you cannot give it a shot i i know someone who matched into dartmouth neurology and i think in four years that was the only img that matched over there especially from india so it, it it's very vague you have to take your chances and we are lucky that it's not gonna it's going to cost money for sure but 100 programs you can easily apply to all the programs if you want you cannot uh, sell yourself short on any way yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much, uh, Aditya. This was very, very informative. And I I really thank you for taking time out, given how mm -hmm. busy you are. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And uh, good luck in your next month, you know, second mm -hmm. month of residence. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And if, we, if people have any questions specifically for neurology, I would be willing to take them because I think it is specific for every individual and those who are here, maybe I can take two or three questions if you don't yeah, mind. Yeah, let's go over a couple of questions. So which visa is preferable for neurology, uh, J1 or H1? I mean, J1 is the best in a way because uh, most of them are university programs and that is why J1 for neurology, there are very limited programs which offer H1B. There is no best visa. I think uh, you have to take what you get at the end of the day, man. Okay. And is attempts a very big red flag in neurology? Uh, I don't think uh, attempts matter if you have worked hard enough on your profile. I don't think any attempt matters, but... I'm sure your work and number of years would increase. You would have to show dedication to them, work in research in the university, and that's how you're going to make it. Okay. Maybe last question. How was research important for you in the math? So how much research did you have? What is the importance of research in neurology? Sure. So research is crucial when it comes to neurology because it's not... You don't have to be Einstein, okay? You just have to know the basics on how the process works. I think those people are just looking at you in a way where do you have the skill to do or work through that process? So keeping yourself involved in abs making abstracts or small, you know, you could also submit your abstracts in AA and which was very crucial for me. So one thing which was very crucial was going to this conference and presenting a uh, poster over there. It is extremely, you know, you can highlight in front of the people over there. People are going to come to you and ask you that, where are you from? They are going to remember you. So that is very helpful in impacting when it comes to neurology and in a way AAN is a very small community like if you look at RP or these big internal medicine things it the number of people are huge but with neurology people are limited all the residency program the biggest one probably has like 16 or 20 residents not more than that and it is way above 12 which comes next so I think uh doing those things and working on research and highlighting that in some conference would be very helpful. But yes, research people in neurology really like research if you are bent towards research because it is a field where a lot of new things are happening. Many people don't know much about things in neurology, so it is very helpful. But it doesn't mean that you would leave research in other fields and not do research if you didn't find anything in neurology you if you get an opportunity to do research in any field learn it you can apply those skills in neurology on any day they care about your skills in research not about what research you did because most of it is not going to be very high value 
to anyone at this stage in our careers. So yeah. we have to make sure that. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that video provided valuable insights for your journey. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And check out our website for details on how we can guide you to a successful match.